Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Califf. Today I want to talk about the basics of hash tables. So when we think about hash tables, the point has to do with the cost of search. So let's think about some of the options that we might use for quicker search. First one we typically learn about is sorted arrays, where if we use binary search, we can get big O of login search, which is pretty good. But insertions and deletions are linear time, big O of N. Then we usually learn about balanced search trees, where all of our operations, search, insertion, and deletion, are big O of log N. But deletion is often complicated and may have high overhead. Now with hashing, we have a new goal, constant time search. We want to actually be able to search for something in constant time, big O of one. So the basic idea is that I'm gonna have an array in which I'm going to store my items. I'm going to have a way to compute an index into that array from the key value. I'm going to store the item in that spot in the array, the one that matches that index that I computed based on the key value for this item. Then to search, I'm just going to compute the index and check that particular spot in the array. So let's start by thinking about cases where we can do what we call a perfect hash. So a perfect hash would be one where every key maps to a different index. That means we have to have a limited range of key values and our array has to be large enough to accommodate every possible key value. Otherwise, we're going to get something we call collisions where we can't put things into the array in the spot because there's already something else there. So here are a couple of examples. First of all, NASCAR teams. We have a key of the car number. Our range then is zero to 110. Those 01, 09, double zero are really 100, 101, 109. So then the function that we need to map from that number to the index in the array is just the key. Another option, suppose we trying to store information about classrooms, things like how many seats, is it a white, you know, does it have a whiteboard? How many screens does it have? That kind of thing. So in this case, our key is probably the room number. So let's suppose we have a building where the range of room numbers goes from 101 to 182. A function we might use to get from that to an array index would just be to subtract 101 from the key which would give us an array which ran from zero to 81. Now, one thing to think about as we're looking at this hashing concept is space tends to be higher than in some of the other approaches that we have looked at. The array just has to have some extra room. NASCAR races field fewer than 40 cars but the array needs to have room for the whole range of indices. So we would need to have room for 110 cars. The classroom building may not have all room numbers used, or maybe we're, maybe there are offices and all we're really interested in is storing information about classrooms. However, we are okay with this if we're doing hash tables, as long as the space cost is not too high. So the idea of hashing is we're going to trade off some space in order to have enough potential indices to get each thing in its own spot. In many real world problems, we have much larger key ranges. Most keys can't be perfectly hashed. Consider a typical student ID with nine digits. That's a billion possible values. Even a very large university is going to have one student per 10,000 spots if we try to make an array big enough to accommodate all of those possible key values. That's not what we're gonna do. Instead, we're gonna use what we call a hash function to take that key value whose range is just too big for us to cover all the possibilities and turn it into a smaller range that is reasonable for a hash table. So we're gonna have a hash function which is just gonna be a function that's going to convert a key to an appropriate index. So the key may have that very large range, but our function is going to have a much smaller range that's going to be the number of items there are in the array. 
It's important as we design this hash function to minimize collisions. We want to scatter the values across the array so we don't have too many things that would like to be stored in the same place. So a typical hash function is the key, assuming it's a numeric integer key, mod the table size. This gives us something zero to the table size minus one, which is a valid index into the table. And it tends to give us pretty good scatter for most kinds of keys because clumping is more likely to occur at the beginning of the key than toward the end. So for instance, at my particular university, the IDs all start with eight. We have nine digits, but the first digit is always eight. So if we try to use something where we're using that end of the ID, we would not get very good scatter. Now, as we're doing this, we also want a table size that is prime. Part of this is to get us better scatter. So if we do a mod by a prime number, then it's going to be less likely to have a lot of things trying to hit the same value. Note that a lot of keys are strings, not numbers. So we're going to have to take the strings and convert them into numbers before the mod is applied. There are a few different functions to do that. Some of them work well, some of them less well. In general, we're going to do something where we're adding and multiplying um, the characters in the string to end up with a number. Now, of course, if we're doing this, we're going to, no matter how good our scatter is, we're going to end up with some things that want to be in the same spot. We're going to have to have some way of handling that. One of the options for that would just be to make a linked list. So at each of the spots in the table, what we call a hash bucket, we're just going to have a pointer to a linked list that's going to contain all the values that mapped here. That works pretty well in some ways. Um, it's certainly pretty convenient, uh, but it can end up if we've got some data where lots of things are hitting the same spots, we can end up sort of turning our search into big O of N search because we have to walk through the list to find things. The other approach is to pick a different location in the array. And there are several different ways we can do that. Some of them work better, some of them are worse. The next video will actually be all about some of the basic collision handling techniques and what's good about them, what's less good about them, as well as how they work. Thanks for watching. I hope this gives you some idea of what hash tables are all about. Uh, in the next video, as I said, I'll be looking at collision handling techniques, some of the basic options and how they work, why you might pick one over another. See you next time.